Oh man, let me talk to you. Yeah! Hope everyone's doing good and uh, shout outs really quick to everyone that's been supporting the channel. I didn't really expect my AEW video to get as many views as it did, but hey, we gotta take the victories where we get them. So I just wanted to say thank you before we start this video. So I just got home from seeing family and in the midst of doing that, I was actually watching SmackDown because I figured, you know, this is a SmackDown after Mania. We're probably going to see some big angles and boy, was I right. Funny enough, we didn't see too many crazy things happen on Raw in comparison, but I'm honestly okay with that because what we got here is actually something that in a way ties back to a previous video that I did about what could be next for Roman Reigns. And I think we have a very big picture that was painted. This is primarily going to be what happens with this new bloodline story. See, the interesting thing is, and I'm sure a lot of us were asking this question, what now happens to the bloodline now that there is no Roman Reigns? There's been a lot of indication and a lot of pointing fingers as to how the story can go in certain directions based on context and clues that we have been given over time in the past a few of them being that roman needed that title to be the tribal chief without it he is not the tribal chief and that we cannot you know truly fully acknowledge him he also needs to be acknowledged by basically all his family members to really be the tribal chief and the other big important thing is that without the wise man there is no tribal chief but if there's no tribal chief, there is no wise man. So I want you guys to keep those pieces of information in mind because now this is where things start to get a little weird, but I think it's going to be for the better. And I hope in this video, we can kind of figure that out together. So the first thing that we have to take note of is that we are left with Solo Sokoa, Jimmy Uso, and one Paul Heyman. Now, remember all the things I had just got done saying? Well, there's no Roman, so there shouldn't really be a wise man. I mean, honestly, the bloodline for what we know should kind of be disbanded. I mean, they're not this big power force or force of power, whatever, however you want to call it, like this nation of domination. Like, you get what I'm trying to say. Without the head of the table, they're basically just a couple guys and a wise guy. <laughs> Sounds crazy. And it's unfortunate even when I say that because like Solo beat John Cena and it went nowhere. That's a completely different topic. Jimmy is Jimmy. So we see the three of them and that much is interesting right off the bat. So after we first see them on camera, we learn that Paul is still taking orders from the tribal chief, but he's not there. So this is like right off the bat, they're starting us off with a lot of strange things. If you're a fan that's been paying close attention to all of this, I'm sure you probably scratching your head as well. Now, per the tribal chief, according to what Paul Heyman was saying, the championship needs to come back to the bloodline when you take the literal words of that it does not indicate that it needs to go back to roman it just needs to come home to the family in some way one way or another let's keep that in mind for the future right also in this backstage segment paul Heyman actually mentions and i don't know if this is a direct jab there's been a lot of talks with people taking jabs at each other back and forth and look for this video, I'm really not trying to talk about who's taking what jabs where and why and blah, blah, blah. If you want to go check out that AEW video that I did, go ahead and knock yourself out. For this one example, it seems like this could be taken as a jab towards AEW because Paul does literally say wins and losses on this show matters. But I think this line plays more into this new story that we're not being told so we fast forward through smackdown and then the bloodline actually comes out and interestingly enough they come out to solo sokoa's music which i mean he has a banger track it's honestly one of my favorite songs in wrestling so now we're all in the ring and then paul starts talking about accountability he goes through the history of how Roman beat 
Cody at WrestleMania 39 off a distraction that Solo caused when he got involved. And, it, and then this time around, there was the a distraction, aka Seth Rollins in the Shield outfit that played a huge integral part. Paul even goes on to even further elaborate that it wasn't The Undertaker's fault. It wasn't John Cena's fault. This is truthfully Roman Reigns' own fault because he decided to take the bait and go after Seth and not Cody, which he could have smashed. So that's a huge implication that Roman definitely could have defended this title. But, you know, that's in an alternate universe at this point. And he drives home this whole idea of accountability and that this is words from the tribal chief as well. Like he is now all about being accountable. Then this is where things start to get really interesting. So after Paul mentions that Cody is, of course, our new undisputed champion, Solo starts to inch towards him in a very eerie way. Like he has something to say. And Paul is very scared at this point. I mean, he's always you know, terrified of Solo. I mean, who wouldn't look at him? So during this scare fest, Solo kind of interrupts Paul in the middle of all his spiel to remind Paul of what he told him earlier in the night, being that wins and losses matter, right? And Paul confirms. And so then he looks at Jimmy. Now, at first, when I was watching this, I was just like, oh my God, is he going to take out Jimmy? But I didn't realize why. You see, when Paul mentions wins and losses matter, I feel like in this story, in real time, Solo took that to literal heart. Who won at WrestleMania in the main event at night two? It was not the Tribal Chief. It was not Roman Reigns. It was Cody Rhodes. That is the first L. Technically, that was the second one because who... Got the first though. That would be a one Jimmy Uso. He goes over and he looks at his brother. He's grilling him hard. Jimmy's scared for his life now, even though I'm pretty sure he's the older brother. And Solo does something that I'm not going to lie, surprised the hell out of me. And he opens his arms up for an embrace. And at that moment, it finally hit me like a freaking bolt of lightning. Solo is taking over he is now assuming position as the brand new tribal fucking chief so as his arms are open jimmy's like timid in a, in a way i mean why wouldn't he be and solo kind of just goes in for the hug and then jimmy hugs him back funny enough we don't get a camera angle on jimmy's reaction we kind of just get his back the entire time. I almost said backshot. That would have been really weird. And Solo is the focus here. He is the complete focal point. And he says to Jimmy that he loves him and that he is his brother. You are my brother. That's literally what he says to him. This cannot get any more anime. And I freaking need all of this bloodline shit on Blu-ray. Fuck streaming. Because if my internet runs out for some reason, if the Wi-Fi goes, I need to have this ready on a damn Blu-ray player, okay? So as Solo ends the embrace, he turns around and he kind of has his arm still on his shoulder. So I'm thinking, oh shit, he's about to set him up for the Samoan spike. But he keeps walking and it's not Solo that takes out Jimmy. It's the debuting Tama fucking Tonga from New Japan. Shout outs to the OG, the BC, you know what I'm saying? And he absolutely brutalizes, destroys, murders Jimmy Uso. Also, Solo joins in on the fighting. And again, Paul Heyman deserves every bit of Hall of Fame that he has. I'm glad that he's still a part of our on-screen characters, especially playing a very integral part in this Bloodline saga. It's remained to be seen if he'll still be on TV going forward, and we'll get to that. But he sells this to demolishing of Jimmy Uso so much so that it really seems like Jimmy got killed in the middle of that ring. Hamatanga was ruthless. Solo was ruthless. I mean, the two of them standing next to each other just the two of them is crazy enough if they wanted to i'm sure they could force their way to winning tag team championships if they want but that's not what's happening here now is it so after this brutal beatdown, we're backstage now and we see the trainer's room and paul Heyman comes out of the trainer's room and dude paul looks completely mind fucked like he's disheveled he's distraught he looks so sad i don't un i don't 
can't remember the last time I've ever seen Paul Heyman express this kind of emotion on screen for us in this very way. And when Caleb Braxton asks for a health update on Jimmy, all Paul can say is, no, it's not looking good. And then here comes Tama, and then Tama utters the words, orders by the tribal chief. And then Solo comes on screen. He gives the camera and everybody watching a very little smirk and walks off the screen. Cinema! So what can we take away from this entire segment? Well, going into this new era, let me just say that with Roman Reigns still not even on our television screens, this guy is essentially like the Tony Stark of all of this. And hear me out before you start typing away. Do you remember in Spider-Man Far From Home, he hooks up Peter with the Edith technology and Edith stood for even dead, I'm the hero. <laughs> Roman Reigns is going to be the biggest tweener, baby phase, anti-hero, hero we will ever see in the history of history because right now the current storyline is the bloodline has never died they are not disbanded they are now in a brand new way more ruthless and more intimidating than they've ever been before because solo sokoa the former heir to the tribal chief position, the heir to the head of the table. This guy was set up in the last saga as the next one to essentially take Roman's throne. But obviously, no one would have predicted that we would see something like that happen so soon. And to be honest, I think this is the best move for Solo Sokoa. Just to note a few things, he beat John Cena last year and it went nowhere this guy has been roman's go-to ever since he brought solo into the bloodline he essentially became what jay was at first so now he's in this position where there is no roman reigns there is no tribal chief and there is no one in the bloodline that has the wwe undisputed universal title because wins and losses matter he is now assuming the throne the position and the seat at the head of the table and he is your new tribal chief and that my friends is fucking godlike i did not think i was gonna want to see this and now that i see it happen before my very eyes i am so excited to continuously tune in to SmackDown at least, because I'm pretty sure that's where the majority of this Bloodline story will continue to take place. And how this will develop will be amazing because right now it's almost as if like they are giving us these pieces slowly and not all at once. And I and I do appreciate that. And by pieces, I obviously am referring to Tamatanga and eventually we will get Jacob Fatu. I'm pretty sure he will be the next recruit to come into this new bloodline just speaking of tamatanga really quick the way he looks the way he was presented and the way he said to paul Heyman by the orders of the tribal chief bro he's already acknowledging solo like i can't i just can't i just can't i am freaking out marking out whatever you want to say i'm just super fucking thrilled and i'm excited that even without roman because you know when he comes back Oh, it's going to be crazy. But what else does this mean? Jimmy is out. Is Paul going to be around? Is he, is he going to act in as this like scared wise man to solo now? Is he going to stay around or is he going to also kind of bow out for the time being? What I'm also looking forward to is to see when Jay gets back involved with this. Because now that Jimmy seems to be written off TV for the foreseeable future, but we'll see next week if he actually is back on or however they want to do that. I imagine that there's going to be some moment where Jay gets involved because what's going to truthfully happen is the bloodline will obviously grow. It's always growing because there's a shitload of Samoans and they never will run out. And Solo is essentially building this brand new extension, this new branch of the bloodline in his 
leadership. And so right now, he is almost mirroring what Roman did. At first, he brought in Jay. Then he brought in Jimmy. After a little while, we did get Solo. We did get Sammy. Then it was a big faction, right? Right now, I see this being similar to that, where he now has Tamatanga. He will then eventually get Jacob Fatu. If we get to see more Samoans get added later on, that would be crazy. I'm open to the idea, but let's see how this plays out. I'm not trying to like bite off more than we can all chew at this point. Ultimately, you only really need those three. Why? Because this is going to perfectly set up the Usos to reunite and Roman Reigns to be with his original the Bloodline squad and we will have another civil war within the Bloodline like we did what was it last year at this point it's crazy that happened last year that's nuts man there's so much to talk about and there's so much to break down and to speculate and to get excited for and i could tell you guys right now this might be the one storyline that i keep up with and i give you guys these like breakdown discussion reaction type of videos but i really do look forward to seeing what you guys think how you guys are theorizing and theory crafting whatever comes to be but if you guys are digging what i'm saying also let me know in the comments like i said i still think that the bloodline story dude we are really in the greatest timeline right now as someone that was really upset to see roman lose it's like even in losing we're all still winning this guy can post a six second tiktok right now and it'll get millions of views this is gonna be amazing once we hear this <laughs> So again, let me know what you guys think as always. And uh, really big shout out to you guys supporting. I really do appreciate that. And I'm going to continue doing these freaking wrestling videos because, dude, this is fun. I love it. And uh, hope you guys have a great one. Take care of yourselves. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.